An amazing thing is happening in many apostolic Pentecostal churches. Stay tuned. I'm going to talk about it. Well, welcome again. Tuesday, November the 21st. Here we are. In two more days, it's Thanksgiving. And Thanksgiving Day is a great day to celebrate. In fact, we're going to, I'm going to give you a little bit of history about Thanksgiving. I mentioned that yesterday. Um, either tomorrow or Thanksgiving Day, one of the two depending on what I can get to. But uh, uh, the, the, the only history we have of Thanksgiving, the first Thanksgiving in America, the only history we have of anybody that was there, an eyewitness, hundreds of years ago, um, is one, there's one account that a man wrote in a letter that he was sending back to England to a friend. And that account is less than 150 words of the description, 150 words in the letter, is a description of the first Thanksgiving. Very interesting. So many of you may already know that, but uh, <clears throat> going over it again won't hurt us. It'll actually help us, I'm sure. Uh, so we're going to do that. But this is Thanksgiving week. This is the beginning in my mind. Everybody's mind's different, but in my mind, this is the beginning official beginning in the holiday season. And um, I love the holiday season. I love Thanksgiving. Of course, I love Thanksgiving dinner. I love Christmas. I love celebrating the birth of Christ. I love being with people that I love. And, um, and I love people's Christmas cards. Um, and all of the good things that go with it. And I love in both of those uh, situations, both Thanksgiving and Christmas, I love the fact that we are worshiping God in a special way, giving him glory for his bounty, giving him glory for his goodness. And Thanksgiving, we are giving thanks for what God has provided us. Thanksgiving, we uh, Christmas, we're giving thanks for coming in flesh and bringing salvation to us, which is the greatest gift, as you know, of all. And so <clears throat> this is the week. This is a great week. I, I love this week. I love being here with you today on this Christmas week. What could be better? What could be better than this? I mean, this is, this is as good as it gets until the rapture comes. And there is a rapture coming, by the way, a catching away of the saints. So anyway, it's just a delight uh, to be with you today um, in this season that we're reminded of being thankful. Now, there's a lot of things I'm thankful for. I, I, I went through a little report yesterday of all of the things that are happening around here that are things that we are thankful for in terms of moves of God and people getting saved and new people coming to church. And, and I didn't even mention the fact that... Uh, there are people that are coming that have not made a commitment yet, but that are so enthused about the church and the move of God and the preaching of the word of God. And they're so excited about it. And they're making statements like, we are definitely making this our church. So um, the, the power and presence of God is rich and good. And people feel it when they come to church. So also, also, I made mention yesterday of the fact that, I mean, in a way that I personally cannot remember ever seeing before, of God blessing churches to be paid off. I'm talking about in 2023. I'm talking about churches that owed hundreds of thousands of dollars, and in some case, millions of dollars. I'm talking about people who have been paying payments on these churches for years, mortgage payments, and then suddenly God steps in and they are paying these churches off. Uh, and, and, and some of them are in such miraculous ways. 
I know in Ontario, California, Pastor Clifford Clark and the congregation there uh, just are paying their church off in a way that is just miraculous, that a year ago people would have thought it was impossible to even think about paying that church off. It's a beautiful church, a beautiful complex. And uh, they have been paying on it, the mortgage on it for a number of years. And, uh, and yet the pastor felt like God spoke to him and, and gave him assurance that this was going to happen. He got up and preached it and announced it, talked about it to the church, and the church embraced it. Boom, and here it is. It has happened. And uh, what a blessing that is to a congregation. But also, what a blessing that is to the work of God and to missions as monies that were going to uh, uh, continue the local church are now monies that can go towards the propagation of the gospel on a broader level, as well as uh, funding further growth and expansion in the local church. So all of these things are tremendous things. Here's another, here's, a, here's, a, here's an exciting one in Memphis, Tennessee. Pastor Caleb and his wife, Christy, and their daughter, Christiana, um, pastor of the Christian Life Church in that city. He is uh, a dear friend. He's a graduate of Wilson University. He's a, a, a man of God that uh, God's got his hand up on him. Uh, he took this church just several years ago. It's not been a long time ago. A uh, little, little just struggling little congregation that had had a, a, a more than its share of trouble. And uh, they were located in, I actually went there by invitation and preached in this uh, little building that they were in. They had it clean, it was nice, it was neat, but it was in a very dangerous area of the city. And um, it, it, was, it, was, it was not uh, a good place for them. And, uh, but they were thankful for what they had, but it wasn't a good place for them. And uh, they prayed, they sought God, they bought, finally they found property, they bought this property, and uh, it's in a tremendous area of Memphis. I don't know the city well, but I've been to this new property and ran the aisles on the property before there was aisles, before there was a building. But um, uh, it's, it's right on the major freeway, one of the major freeways that goes through Memphis. It is in a spectacular neighborhood. Uh, it has uh, easy access on and off of the freeway so people can get to it. Um, and there they, <clears throat> they begin to build. Just a small congregation, but they begin to build. And they built by faith and they built a beautiful church that, I mean, it's beautiful. It's, it's got all of the amenities that a church needs to be able to minister effectively and have all the tools at hand that you need to do this. They did it right. Um, uh, I don't remember what it would seat, maybe 400 or so. Now, that's only been just a very few years ago. Just, I mean, not long at all. And now... Um, I got a text yesterday that said, just thought would let you know, we paid the church off this week. So I don't know how many hundreds of thousands of dollars that is in a very short span of time, but God has blessed them. And God, that this is just another example of how God is moving and blessing these churches. So now if you're, if you're a pastor and you've got a big mortgage and you're worried about it and you've been paying on it for years and it's just gnawing away at you, well, then just get out on your knees and say, God, if you're doing it for these people, they're no better than I am. And God, I want you to, I want you to do a miracle. I want you to help us. And, and I want you to tell me how to lead these people, that you can bless them, that they can respond. And if, if there's outside sources, that's good too. But in most of these churches, it is not some angel from outside of the church that's come in. And there are a few that that's happening. But, but in most of them, it is not that. It is that God's got his hand on these people. And God is blessing his people. And these people are attuned to spiritual vision and spiritual empowerment and enablement. As a result of that, they are 
uh, they are exhibiting faith and saying, we can do this. And so we're really excited about this, really excited about this, of what God is doing for these churches. He's helping us here also. We are in the process of, of a, a challenge to pay off this church. In, uh, the, this was starting at the 1st of 23, and uh, we are in a challenge to pay it off in 24 months, which would be the end of 24. Uh, originally, the mortgage originally was uh, close to $10 million, and uh, right now it's down to three plus, three point something million dollars, and it's dramatically dropping. At the beginning of the year, it was at $5.2 million. It's, this is how far it's dropped already this year, and, uh, and God is doing it, and he's blessing people. And I want to say this carefully. I mean, I don't want to be misunderstood, but people are not doing this. Now, there may be somebody somewhere, but people are not doing this out of sacrifice. They're doing this out of blessing. While they are doing it, they are more blessed than they've ever been in their lives. This is happening. This is a, in, in fact, this is a spiritual principle that God, he must bless his people, and he promised to bless his people that we are enabled to be able to do the job that he gave to us. And that job is found in, in Genesis 12 and 3, where God said in Genesis 12 and 1 and 12 and 2, he told Abraham, I'm going to bless you, I'm going to bless you, I'm going to bless you, I'm going to bless you. At least five times he talks about the blessing that God's going to give him. And he goes further than that. He says, and anybody that blesses you, I'll bless them. Anybody that curses you, I'll curse them. And then in verse 3, he gives the reason for all of these blessings. He said, in thee, I will bless thee, that in thee shall all the families, later it says nations, all the families and nations of the earth be blessed. How are you going to bless them? Because he has the gospel, and the gospel is the way that we bless them. And so so we have to be blessed to be blessed. We teach this. We don't teach the people to give your baby's milk money away or to not pay your car payment so you can give to the church. That's not right. you, you You made that debt. You owe that to that. Uh, to that loaner, whoever it happens to be, bank or credit union or whatever. But in the meantime, when we get this revelation, and churches are getting this revelation, they are getting, and and pastors are are beginning to see this, and this is a core thing that's taught right here in Wilson University about church leadership and and how to lead a church in these areas. These These are some basic revelations that many people do not have. I was preaching for somebody the other day, and they were talking about, they were taking an offering for something, they were talking about, uh, and, and God wants us to sacrifice today, and God, and God, we do, we do sacrifice, we do sacrifice, but God's economy, the way God's economy runs is not that people operate on sacrifice, they, we sacrifice our time, we sacrifice all kinds of things. But God has to bless us. We cannot bless till we've been blessed. You cannot bless people preaching about the baptism of the Holy Ghost, which is the core blessing, unless you have been blessed. And the Bible tells us very clearly, Galatians 3.14 and other places, that God's blessings, the blessings of Abraham have come up on us, and the blessings it specifically says, the blessing is the Holy Ghost. And so out of the Holy Ghost comes supply, and uh, so in this season that we're in, this is, this, is, this is Thanksgiving week. And so this is a season in which we ought to be thankful. Amen. And the church <clears throat> and the church ought to be conscious of that. And each one of us ought to be conscious of being thankful in this particular time of the year. So when I see what God's doing in these churches, I know that if he's doing it for these churches, I know God is a respecter, is not a respecter of persons. I know God doesn't love me any more than he loves you. I know God doesn't love these people that are receiving these wonderful supernatural blessings on a huge scale. I know he doesn't love them any more than he loves you. And so we all together, we need to come together and say, come on, let's don't protect things that don't work. Let's lay them aside and get our ego out of it And let's reach into the rich blessings and rich revelations of God of how things are done. I challenge you to do that. 
And I know that God will bless you just like he's blessing these other people. God bless you. Thank you for being with us today.